What's poppin' and welcome back to another video. It is so that I've completed the first version of the app and like I showed you in the last video we now have a complete product. But you've only seen the nice front end and behind every nice front end there's a messy back end. And that's what I thought I'd show you right now. How the code is set up, what runs the app, what powers the app, kind of how it works together, all of the stuff. The, how the database works together with the code in the app to be able to gather all of the data you need to display the stories etc etc and i know a lot of people watching this channel are interested in coding i think this will be interesting to look back at in like 20 years by the way by the time i'm recording this shit's about to hit the fan but it hasn't really yet so we'll see when i put this video out what the global situation is like but i thought it would be a good opportunity to go over all the code as we have it now kind of show you how it works and then yeah just display what the back end is like so let's get to it Okay, so here we are with all of the code that we have and we have this little simulator set up over here to the right and then we have the code editor over here to the left. And I thought we would just take, you know, a little bit of time to go over the code which is powering the app right now and kind of just show you the basics. I know we've done this before but I thought it was a pretty piss poor review of what everything is like. So I thought, yeah, why not uh, do it again now that everything's complete. And since the last time I made a video like this a lot has happened and a lot has changed. So. I thought, why not go over this again? So, starting from the beginning, the main.dart file is the kind of main powerhouse of everything. This is what powers everything. This is where you have the run function. So the function which ensures that everything runs on start, etc. The home page is essentially only a bottom navigation bar. So as you can see here, we have a page controller and that is basically just a controller which listens to which page that we're on. Then we have a list and the list is called page options and there we have profile page, category page, search page, home page, scaffold. And as you can see, that happens to correspond exactly to the ones that we have down here. Then down here we have this function called onTapped and what this does is that when you tap another one of these, you select the index that is for example the search page and then we will also say that we want to update the selected index to index. And when we update the selected index to index, we are also update whatever we see in this list. So for example, moving down here, we have the body uh, of this whole home page scaffold. It's just a bunch of page options and a selected index of the list. So now that we the selected index is zero, it will be the home page. So it will, from the home page options, it will select uh, zero, which is home page scaffold. If I press search page, this widget will then uh, we'll execute the untapped function and we will update the index to the index of the search page and we will display the search page. Pretty damn good. Then we're moving on to the home page itself. And as you can see here, it's just a bunch of lists essentially. And basically all it is is uh, a lot of lists that are stacked on top of each other. So we have the classic sagas, we have the wonder sagas originals. Uh, nothing more exciting than that. So I thought, why not show you the actual list? Because the home page is nothing more than just all of these things stacked on top of each other. Therefore, we will head over to listbuilders.dart. And this is where we keep all of the list builders that we use in order to display these various lists. So for example, the featured list, the my favorites list, the Wonder Sagas Originals list. And how this works is that we have, so let's take Original Sagas, for example. We have a future builder, which is essentially something that when this widget runs, it will pull a future from the database and then display that here. So we want to run a future or a, a Firebase Firestore instance where the collection is Sagas, that's the collection I have in the database, and where the author is equal to Wonder Sagas. So how this works in the back end is if we take a look at this and we go over to the Firestore database, and we take a look at these different collections. So this is the one we're referencing first. We're referencing, okay, everything in Sagas, where one of these documents has an author, and we see author here, where the name is Wonder Sagas. And then based on that, it will pull all of this information. And based on this information here, it will build the list with all of those uh, attributes. And as you can see, once we, we get all of this data from, from the database, we store this in the document, and then we can, for example, pull the document image URL, which will be the URL to this particular um, thumbnail that we store in the database. And right now it's saying document image URL, and then we see this one. And then also we have this thing called the gesture detector. 
Uh, gesture detector means that when we press one of these stories, that's in the list builder. So let's take Wonder Saga's originals. When we take, when we press Wonder Saga's originals, we will be taken, we will be taken to a material page route and sent to the Saga view. And in the Saga view, we will be sending these different attributes. So for example, the Saga view requires these parameters that you take in. So when we send to the Saga view, we also take in these parameters and send it to the Saga view. And in the Saga view, we use this to build the actual view. So let's press horseback riding, for example. Then we're taken to the saga view. And as you can see here, the saga view requires, so these are all required parameters. Then we submit a string, a string for the image URL, a string for the audio URL, an integer for the length, and then a list for the tags. And that is exactly what we do here when we send you from the material, when we send you from the list through the material page route to the saga view. And in the saga view, it is the same bottom navigation bar as we have on all other pages. But the only difference being that if you press a button, you remove all of the layers on top of this uh, widget. And as you can see, how the description is wrong. So let's pick another one. Let's pick a journey to the past. Um, so then, for example, if I press profile now, I will close all of the different stacks of widgets that I've placed on top of this and just head over to the profile page. But we won't do that exactly now. So basically, all this is is one big list view. As you can see here we have a list view with bouncing scrolling physics meaning that it bounces at the top and at the bottom which I think is quite nice and then we just have a bunch of UI essentially. So we have the image uh, that we got when we uh, submitted the or when we ended up in the saga view so we take that image URL and we create an image over here etc. But uh, it's nothing more interesting than just a bunch of UI. But from here you can kind of read this description. You can see, okay, do I want to listen to this? Do I not want to listen to this? And if you want to listen to this, there's this one button called listen now. And as you can see, this is also uh, surrounded by a gesture detector. So if you uh, press listen now, you'll be sent to the Saga View wrapper. And the Saga View wrapper is just a... A wrapper is something which you can use to display a widget depending on an if statement. So now the wrapper will check if you're logged in. If you're logged in, you'll be able to listen to the story. If you're not logged in, you won't be able to listen to the story. So for example, now we're not logged in. So if I press listen now, I'll be taken to this page since the wrapper has identified that I'm not logged in. Then we have the audio view. And first of all, there's a bunch of functions. And this is just play or pause, play saga, pause saga, change the speed, etc. Just a bunch of functions which I use in order to be able to let the user do whatever they want to do with the audio. But let's log in quickly. Okay, so now we're in the sign in, sign up page. And I, as you saw before, I couldn't listen to the story because I'm not signed in. So then to do that, I will have to sign in. So here we have the sign in page. And the sign in page is just quite simple. It's just two text fields. First of all, uh, we will have two controllers. One is the email controller and one is the password controller. The email controller will listen to whatever is in the email field and the password controller whatever in the password field. And based on this, when you press submit, we will use what we have in the auth file in order to determine is this someone who can sign in? Do they need to sign up? Do they not have an account, for example? So in this instance, we uh, will first check if the email and the password that you've entered, if it's a uh, uh, user and then based on this we will execute the function that is sign in with email and password So then we will first use this which is user from firebase Which is another function to check if this is an actual user from firebase if it is we'll be able to sign in if it's not We won't be able to sign in since then they do not have an account essentially So for example now then I will head over to here which is the sign in sign up page, the UI for here. I will be prompted to enter an email address because the label text as you can see is email. If we uh, then hover over here, we see yeah, the input text is email. If I then input my email. So I'm now submitting all of my details that I need. So since I've updated this, as you can see, the email controller has been updated since the email controller will listen to every change that takes place in this text form field, essentially. And then the exact same thing applies for the password field. So. Now I have these two variables, they're filled with what I have entered here and what I've entered here. And as you can see, when I press sign in later on, I have this function here on press, there will be an asynchronous function that will either validate that I've entered an email and the password. And if that is valid, then we will await the auth service and the auth service is what we had over here. And we will execute the function that is sign in with email and password, where we send the email controller and we make that a text and we take the password controller and we make that a text. And then based on that, we will either sign in or we will throw in an error. We will see, okay, sign in failed, sign in. So then when I press sign in there, I will be executing this function here and we will be taken to the main home page. 
Nice. Then we also have the actual audio page then. So let's head over to that. We have the audio view. So if I press the story now and I press listen now, I'll be first be shown this very nice loading page where all the audio is buffering. And then after that, we will uh, be taken to this page. And as you can see before in the saga view, when we press the saga view wrapper, we also send the image URL, we send the title, the author, description, audio, and everything which you need to build this. And if you look here, this is because this widget requires that we submit these parameters when we're taken to this page. So we have the saga title, saga URL, all, all that good stuff. And then there's a bunch of UI, which is just the orange background, the white overlay, etc. And then down here we have all these function, functions defined again. So we have play music, pause music, change the second, change speed, um, which is just functions from the assets audio player widget that I use in order to build this. And then I've just predefined them so that I can use them easily later on further down into the widget. So there will be first you'll be checking if the uh, audio is playing or if it's buffering. If it's buffering, that's when we're shown that nice loading page. If it's not buffering, then we build this whole scaffold. For example then, again, UI stuff like position. For example, this is just that uh, we position this white box here in the middle and there will be adapter for all types of screens. And if that's all good, then we will be displaying the rest of this. So then we have the builder real-time playing infos, which is a uh, function that you get predefined from the assets audio player widget. And this is where you can then collect all of the player info in order to uh, display, for example, if I press play now and then pause, it will have sent that metadata to the iOS so that you can actually view it like this here and also play airplay and all of that good stuff. Then we have a slider and the slider adaptive is this thing that you see here and it will update in real time based on the real time playing infos and then we'll take that duration in seconds, convert that to a double and then display that number here on the slider. Uh, then yeah, it's just a bunch of other uh, functions. For example, there's a function that's called uh, liked saga. So if I press this uh, star here, I can like or unlike a saga and it will be added to my favorites, etc, etc. And then update that in the database and so forth. That is pretty much the main view of the code. I, mean, I know there's so much stuff I can show, but you know, in a 15 minute YouTube video, there's not that much you can squeeze in. Let's take one last part, which is the search page. And the search page is over here. And that's what you get to see when you press search and then we have some logic to check if it's the first query and the first query is a boolean that's always set to true to begin with and the first query and the query is then just an empty string then i have down here in the search text field we have a, a cupertino search text field and this has a on change parameter so whenever i change this i will take the query and i will set that to the value of what i have in the text so once i change the text here i will change the query as well as change the boolean to false. So if I have a query, then the boolean will be false. So if the query is empty, the first query is always true. If the query is not empty, then the first query is always false. And then based on that, we will display different parameters. Based on this, we will first uh, either, if the query is empty, we'll take all of the sagas and just select all of the sagas. If the query is not empty, which is this other alternative here in this if statement, we will select from the collection sagas and we will send the title to a lowercase and then select all of the titles that contain the text that we're typing in the text field. So if we take the now, for example, in the real time we will have an update of all of the sagas that contain the, which is quite a few. But for example, take cat then, just one. Uh, pretty neat. But how this works is that I have a database over here where I have, first of all, I have some storage, and this is where we store all of the uh, data for the saga. So for example, we have the ghost written sagas, and we have a journey to the past. And in the journey to the past, we have a thumbnail, which has a link with a specific API code, and we have the MP3 with also a specific MPI code. Then, once we head back to the collection, we have the sagas, and then we can, for example, take a look at this one, which is cat and mouse in partnership. Then we have a bunch of different data for this. We have the added data, audio URL, author, Grimbra, yeah, author, description, image URL, length, saga ID, tags, title, title, lower, all of the stuff which we need to build out the app with the information of the saga or story. I don't know if people understand when I keep on calling it sagas. I feel like I've been so used to this now that uh, 
maybe it's understandable. And then based on this, we will build out this list view. And this list view is quite easy to build. You use a future builder and then you use a future and then the future you make a specific query. And if the snapshot has data, then we'll return in this expanded widget with a list view inside, which is essentially what you see here. If it doesn't have data, we'll just return a circular progress indicator, which is basically saying that we don't have data yet. So that's what you will see when it's uh, loading. Yeah, that's quite a quick overview of how the code is put together, how it all looks, what it looks like in the back end. I know this was a very quick video in relation to everything which we could go over, but I thought that we covered the most important parts and maybe you get a little bit of an understanding of how the back end of this app works. I should say it, I'm not a programmer, I have no background in this, I've taught myself entirely through YouTube, so if it looks messy, if it looks bad, then you have the answer right there. If you're liking this video, then you're like, damn, I like this guy babbling about his code in his home office, closet, whatever you want to call it, then please consider subscribing so you can follow on along this journey, see what happens. Next video, for example, we're going to be uploading the beta test, seeing what the response for that is like. So if you want to continue following this, please subscribe, leave a like down below, hit the notification bell so you're notified of future uploads, and I'll see you in the next one.